Hello, 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 friends. Welcome back to Medical Billers Network Live. It is Thursday live with you all beautiful, all of you beautiful people. Um, my name is Jasmine Vealies. If you are new here, welcome to this space here at Medical Billers Network Live. We are banding together to, on our global mission here on the Inlara University channel to alleviate the stress and confusion and the business of healthcare through education, collaboration, sharing all of our knowledge. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I feel like we should add music to that countdown. I miss our music. <laughs> I'm forgetting about that. I said, it's like so funny that I'm like sitting in here in silence while it counts down. And it feels like a really long time until the last like 10 seconds. And I'm like, oh my God, it's going to count down. <laughs> um, so true story. I'm like frantically like, oh, so, so chill. And then all of a sudden the last 10 seconds, I'm breaking out. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, I hope you guys are doing great. Tell me what, that you're here when you get here. Say hello in the comments of wherever you are tuning in from. Shall share with me um, what's your temperature today? I have heard some from some friends in the Midwest, some of our team members that are in the Midwest that are like, it's snowing, it was freezing. Here in Charlotte, it's in the 70s. I'm so grateful <laughs> for warm temperatures. We keep having like this up and down thing going on in our city right now. So, um, you know, but I'm okay with it. I'm bracing, bracing for spring. It's going to be a beautiful one here in Charlotte. This, this city comes alive when um, the temperatures are gorgeous out. So we are ready for for it. Um, so my friends, today we're talking process. I'm excited to share in this um, journey with you as we continue this conversation of process documentation. But before we do, um, I'm going to quickly just do a little recap from last uh, session. So last time together, we talked about uh, process in the revenue. Well, a couple of times ago, we talked about the importance of process in the revenue cycle. Last time we talked about how to document the process in the revenue cycle. We specifically went through documenting um, in a written form, primarily in written form, and um, and we I covered a couple of quick apps. We uh, looked at an example last time together. If you have trouble finding that video, we did have a technical issue with the video that dropped it from lives on our page to recorded or videos, the videos tab on the YouTube channel. So if you refer back to the channel page, you should see it under videos and not under the lives. Um, so just keep an eye out for that. Um, this format we are shifting to, we're doing this quick intro. We're going to recap. We're going to take questions. I'm going to go over my my meet with you, and then we're going to do Q&A. So make sure you ask your questions throughout the entire session um, while we're chatting. And um, whenever we do these educational-ish ones, um, I will be um, doing the open kind of conversation Q&A at the end. So ask your questions throughout, though, because my team is in the back end and like prioritizing the questions as they come in. And um, yeah, it's going to be a fun time. When you get back to older videos, um, the last video that we, or the one prior to that was the importance of process. We're going to kind of circle back to um, that topic as we move into apps. Um, our next week's conversation is going to be a discussion around the apps that we use or recommend you guys um, entertain using if you're just getting started in documenting process. If you have... Um, no idea how to get started in documenting process and what to do. Uh, watch all the videos because they're going to help you. And then also definitely tune in for the apps video because that one will be a really great resource. Today we're talking about video and audio documentation of the processes. And so as we go through this discussion of audio and video, I would love to know what you guys are using. If you have a specific app that you're using, I'd love to know. Tell me in the comments whether you're watching um, live or in the replay. Um, and again, as you guys join me, say hello. Tell me that you're here. Give me some uh, shout outs of your temperature in your city, sunny, shady, cloudy, all the things. I'm curious what's going on in your part of the world. Um, all right. So on this channel, we um, often we, we are talking about topics that we are um, some of us are already inter 
in, involved in. And then some of you might be brand new here to the world of billing and curious. So I want to quickly cover the courses that we offer. We do offer online courses. Some of our courses are self-paced. Some of them are what we would call instructor-led. So the first couple of courses that I'll highlight here is our Medical Billing 101. Really great course for someone who's absolutely brand new. If you are trying to understand the world of billing, whether or not you are interested in going into the, the industry, or if you were someone who has just kind of been introduced to U.S. healthcare and want to understand it a little bit more deeply, this is definitely the course for you. It will also help you decide if it's something that you want to do as a career. Next is language of billing. Language of billing is um, is a very important course because we have a bunch of jargon in our industry. So it's the course that will introduce you to um, how we speak and the most commonly used acronyms and shorthand um, form, short form language that we utilize on a day to day basis. Um, and if you check under our bundles when you get to the site, um, to the um, the site that has the bundles listing, the bundles are for both the Medical Billing 101 and Language of Billing together. So you can buy both of those in one. Um, um, package. Next, we have our medical terminology and for billing and coding. So as a biller and a coder, anyone who's on the uh, it, kind of the back end or the administrative side of healthcare really should understand some medical terminology, even if you're interfacing with patients to do scheduling, because likely you're going to be introduced to terms that you would want to have a little bit of knowledge in if the patient mentions a specific or particular diagnosis that might change what provider you would recommend that they get scheduled with. So uh, medical terminology for billing and coding is helpful for folks on the billing side, um, whether you're in the front end of the revenue cycle on the front desk or in the collections area, it's very, very important to understand, especially if you're writing appeal letters on the back end, so valuable. So hi, Mohammed, great to see you. Welcome back, friend. Um, we are also talking medical office reception is on pre-order. It is going to be up here in the next week or so. If you are interested in entering into healthcare and are not sure whether you want to be um, going directly to the back office and working in billing, but you want to maybe have more interfacing with patients. And first, as an entry point into healthcare, medical office reception is definitely going to be the uh, medical office reception excellence is definitely the course that you are um, going to want to look into. Lastly, or second to last actually, is um, one of our instructor-led programs. This is our Mastering Medical Billing. This is a 16-week course. It is um, one where we really hold your hand through learning the world of billing. So you, when leaving this program, would be prepared for a career as a medical biller. This program is a hands-on opportunity for you to really gain knowledge led by myself and other folks on the team that are billers. Very important that you understand that some programs are are, are taught by individuals that are not actively do, in the billing industry, um, that don't necessarily understand day-to-day -day what happens. And so you really want someone who has real-life knowledge um, to be able to help guide you to what you're going to be facing from day-to-day -day, and then also give you that hands-on experience so that when you hit the ground, whether it's in an interview capacity or our given the opportunity to take on a billing job, you're not feeling like you're starting from scratch, right? So that next course um, starts, the next cycle starts March 27th. So you can join us again. That's a 16, what, 16 week program that it is instructor led. So you would need to pace along with us. You can start late if you have to, but it's something that um, we would want you to start um, and walk with us along the entire way. All right. Lastly, very next course that is um, launching here in the next couple of weeks, um, also led by myself as an instructor-led program, is CPB Readiness. That is your Certified Professional Billers Readiness Test. So if you are wanting to get certification for yourself, getting into healthcare, something that you would want to uh, have as a credential that makes you stand out on your resume, on any of the applications that you are completing for new roles. It's absolutely um, one of the most important things that you can do if you're trying to give yourself a leg up above other folks that are in the billing world, especially for organizations that do require credential uh, credentials. There are a lot of organizations that require that you have some sort of credential um, and that you're attached to a reputable or known organization such as the um, AAPC. So this is a 12-week instructor-led program. It starts on March 7th. Um, I would, if you're interested in it, check it out. It does have some, both of our um, larger programs have payment options. And so absolutely something that you would want to um, start looking into now, because I would need to make sure that you have time to get books and things as well. All right, friends. Um, 
we are going to dive right in. Today, we are talking about document process, um, documenting, documenting process, <laughs> documenting process with audio and video um, for audio and video or using audio and video as a method of documentation. When you get here, if you have any questions about anything that we chat about today, I absolutely recommend pop the questions into the chat as we move along. If you have questions about what I just shared, briefly ran through the courses, um, feel free to ask those questions as well. And yeah, let's go ahead and dive in. I'm going to stop my screen share here, back up away from the screen because, wow, my face was big. Okay. <laughs> so today we are talking about the art of process documentation, something that I love near and dear to my heart. If you have missed out on our pre pre previous videos, the um, valuable or why it's valuable or important to document process, the um, kind of the intro to it. I'll make sure we link that video as well as last week's uh, process documentation in written form. We'll also link that video um, below in the description. So if you're catching this one, you're not late to the party, but totally check out the other videos. In this one, we're going to chat specifically about audio and video documentation. So I'm first going to talk about video documentation because it's YouTube. No, no, because honestly, I think that it is the most personable way to present uh, a training or a process to an individual, whether or not that person is um, a team member on your team, or if it's someone like a client um, that, let's say you have a billing company and you're trying to train them in a process, it's even valuable for you to present um, your processes in video form as well, or your desired step-by-step um, -step um, tutorial to your clients in video form because it is this. It's face-to-face. -face. It gives them the opportunity to have the face with the information that is being presented. Um, I'm going to go over the different types of video that typically we will see, and there are a lot of other kind of micro forms that exist. Um, but the thing to know is that when we talk about process documentation, we're really looking at trying to communicate the process in a lot of different forms. And so just as a review to what we talked about before is we're looking to deliver this training material in the way that individuals are going to best absorb it. And so keep in mind that everybody learns differently. And so if you have um, if you have someone who is more of a kinesthetic learner, that's someone who might need more hands-on opportunity, you're going to make sure that you give them some labs and some opportunities to do some things um, hands-on after they've already received that training because it's going to be um, more deeply ingrained in them. They're going to digest it better if they actually have hands-on. Someone who's more of a visual learner will need to be able to see the tutorial and it's not um, maybe in its live state, right? They need to actually see you interacting with that information. So video is powerful for that. Someone who has an auditory learning, um, you know, as far as like really being able to retain that information is going to need to hear it. So something in writing may not may not be absorbed as well. So if you have a written process, that might be fine and dandy, but they might need to actually hear you speak it. So the reason why I love the video and why I believe it's so powerful is that it can it has the opportunity to really um, encompass all of the learning styles, really with the exception of kind of the hands-on, um, someone who's more of a kinesthetic learner, you can really give an opportunity for, for um, you to speak to a lot of the learning styles to be able to um, have that encompassed in really one method. So um, so definitely um, consider video. I would absolutely strongly recommend video. If you are on YouTube, LinkedIn, whatever, you're watching this. So you probably have an affinity to video and it's something that you would probably see very valuable and it is the reason why YouTube is uh, in the running we'll say to their uh to the second the uh, the first largest search engine which is Google right where people are looking for things in writing but video is right there next to it we um those of us who love live and love YouTube and look for, look for answers to almost everything on YouTube can um, can uh, attest and you guys my friends who are here um, listening can you you guys can confirm that that's true um, all right so our video forms so we've got micro video so micro video are very short instructional videos it's uh, one to two minutes you know that's kind of like the TikTok of the video recording it's like a quick snip of like here is the process this is what it's for. Okay, so it's a quick video. It's very valuable, especially if you have um, 
let's say a micro process that someone is is doing like a uh, credit card processing right super simple maybe you know it might be something that you're just trying to walk them through how to open up the the credit card module and how to make sure that the card is is um is is properly inserted into a device or what have you if you know depending on where you are in the revenue cycle if you're on the back end you know maybe you're talking about um, how to make sure that you are loading that module up, how to how to um, request the information from the, the the caller, and how to hit submit. So micro video would suffice. One to two minutes, such a small, short process. Hopefully, um, hopefully I say that because I've seen some lengthy ones. Um, so micro videos is one one of the types of videos. Next video is a tutorial. So think about tutorial being a step by step guide. All right. So it's a I'm taking you through a process and I'm going to give you step by step instructions as though I would be um, almost presenting an SOP in that step by step form. So it's a lot of the time those tutorial videos are the ones that you might get from a software company that that does um, like a robotic style voice over the tutorial or it's like um, there's fairly dry. Um, to be frank, <laughs> fairly dry. And I, you know, not my favorite process when you, when you use a robot voice, no one really loves when you hit like a tutorial video that is like this quite boring snore fest of a, of a robotic voice. Um, so not my favorite, but it can be, um, personalized, we'll say, or, um, uh, delivered in a better way with some a blend of what I'll talk about later. Next is a screencast. So this kind of would be a little bit what, what we do here on this channel would kind of be a little bit a blend of a screencast tutorial um, explainer style. And I'll talk about explainer in a minute. A, a screencast or like a screen share video is a really informal training. So it's really almost as if you were sitting with the individual, um, you are screen sharing and maybe talking through things as, as though you were having a dialogue one-on-one. -on -one. Usually when we are training someone live and in person, it's less robotic, less step-by-step -step where you just are saying the, the phrasing and um, there's more uh, words, we'll say, more a lot more... Uh, um, backstory kind of fillers in there. Okay. So screencast is definitely a little bit more of an, of an informal, if you were doing a zoom training, that would be an example of a, um, of a screencast or a screen share informal ish type training because you're doing a, um, a live session. People might be asking questions throughout. So it's definitely more of, um, of a loose training, a loose tutorial, we'll say, um, where you're just spending a little bit more time in dialogue. Um, okay, explainer video. So explainer video is is like those, you know, if you think about like YouTube, the videos where you have those um, uh, drawings where people are kind of explaining something and they, they pencil it out and they give this beautiful visual representation of something. Typically, it takes a very complex topic and they break it down in these very um, quick, succinct um, presentations of visual concepts or visual illustrations, I should say. And so um, I like explainer videos. I think that explainer videos are valuable if you are... Um, trying to get someone to understand something like a revenue cycle, right? When we talk about it, um, the one thing about explainer videos for an organization, if you're trying to teach someone um, what you're doing internally is, is that you, you have to have someone that ha knows how to work one of those illustration tools. <laughs> there are um, there are ways to find people. If you like explainer videos, don't know how to really get started with it on Fiverr, I would recommend you go to Fiverr because Fiverr has a lot of really great um, creators on there that can give you um, these types of, of explainer videos really quick and, um, and, you know, very succinct, um, as far as what they are going to need from you to be able to create that explainer video. Most of them are pretty painless. Um, next is, or lastly really is our lecture or presentation style. So that's like our slideshow, like, uh, pulling up some slides. I'm going to like walk you through it, but it's going to be fixed or, um, uh, uh, what is the word? Uh, not moving <laughs> um, presentations. So these fixed slides where there's images and words and text and things like that, where you're, I'm walking you through while I'm also talking. So it might be a little bit more supportive for someone who's visual, but certainly not a live um, walkthrough of a process um, exactly. So where, where a presentation could be helpful 
is if you are trying to introduce someone to the purpose for a particular process. So um, if I have someone that is starting in my organization and I'm trying to explain the importance of the function of data capture, right? Why it's important for us to obtain the patient's information um, upfront the first uh, accurately the first time would be an example of the concept of like using a presentation. So I might go through talking points and at bullet points and and really kind of explain the reason why they need to um, really under uh, deeply understand the um, the role that they have in data capture. So it's more proving the importance of this process and them really understanding uh, why it's important for them to have full ownership of the process. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so those are the really the types of videos so with that micro video tutorials, our screen share, screencast, um, the explainer videos, and then like a lecture presentation style. Um, I'm going to be totally honest. The best way to deliver a video recording for someone who is trying to learn protocol in your organization is a blend of all of those. So you can kind of take, I'd say, an explainer presentation, someone who's just getting started with something that would be a great foundation. Using my example of data capture, if I have a new front desk or someone that's newly going to enter charges, I want them to understand the importance of that function. I'm probably going to do that through a brief slideshow, maybe um, me just a talking head, maybe me just speaking to them in a video, not sharing my screen or anything, just making my point as though I was sitting with someone, right? As, a, as if I was trying to explain to someone when on day one on the job for them, why this is important for them to um, to understand the 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 data their role in data capture, what the the impacts are and the implications of them not entering the information inaccurately. So it's I think it's very important to um, to recognize that that is that is powerful for someone to understand their role in revenue cycle and how it impacts what what um, the organization organization does as a whole. And then you're going to move into a step-by-step, -step, right? You're then going to, to give an example of, okay, patients in front of me, I need these documents. How do I scan an ID card? How do I ask the patient for their ID and their um, driver's license or uh, proof of identification, right? I need to understand how to do that. And so that process or the, um, the interaction with our patient is probably one that would be best explained in a tutorial style video um, because I'm I'm probably going to need to give them a step by step, ask for the card, take the card, um, insert it into the, your card scanner, right? So you're going to make sure that you'll have the uh, step by step of how that interaction takes place. Um, I might even have a layering on another form. I might even have a, um, a micro video that has like a short example of what that Inter interaction looks like, um, almost like a, um, gosh, a totally an, an improvisation or a mock video, um, a scenario that shows, you know, me welcoming Mr. Jones and saying, hey, Mr. Jones, may I have your cards and asking for that information from the patient. So recognizing that it's very helpful for folks to see live almost, you um, reenactments of a scenario um, for them to really understand what that's supposed to look like. Then they're also getting that step-by-step -step process, maybe the scripting, meaning the words that you want them to state along the way. So you're giving them that script. You might even give them a checklist. Remember the written form we talked about last time, a checklist to make sure that they've they've ticked off all of this, the necessary steps. Um, and then I, you know, I'm, I'm, I might be um, giving them that presentation to explain to them the importance of it, right? So I'm mashing up all of those things to be able to produce something that is going to be uh, longer lasting for that team member. And it gives it to them in so many forms that you're you're hopefully going to, it's going to absorb 
into their memory. They're going to actually store that in the memory bank. And they're also going to know that whatever feels most comfortable for them, they've got, they know where that information is, right? They now have an introduction to, oh, there's a checklist. That's easier for me. I'm more of a visual person, or I, I like to be able to kinesthetically like check things off. That is Sometimes, sometimes for us that that are accustomed to to, to creating to do lists, it's quite empowering for someone that's learning something new to move down the list and actually tick things off. Okay, so super helpful for you to recognize that um, that there are folks that need things in different forms. And when I am training someone, especially if I am a remote team member, a lot of our billing staff these days are remote. And so if you are trying to train someone remote and you want to make this something that's a replicatable training as well, you're storing this information, you are creating this training material for you now to be able to utilize time and time again. Okay, so that is that is what we are trying to um, do here with all of this process documentation. It is trying to make this replicatable, something that folks can do, utilize. You can refer them back to it. They can use it over and over again. If you need to um, add to your team, you now have resources, a resource bank for the new team members to um, to consume when they start with you. That alleviates you from the process. It also gives um, support for the team member, right? So you're giving the support of them uh, being able to reference or refer back to this information time and time again. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so we have our video. We now have the video that was created to support the team member, it's a mashup of those different types. Um, and we'll talk next time. I'm going to re review apps in our next session, remember? Um, so in, in the next session, we'll look at how to utilize the apps and ways that you can kind of create those micro steps and those micro videos even for individuals. Um, I believe that the best way to record videos is not to wait until you want to like sit down and walk through a process. The best way to do it is to just dive in. We talked about that last time. If you are trying to onboard a team member to support the area, as my example of data capture, let's say um, you've been fun you've been the one running that function for a time, but now you're ready to bring someone into the role, you should record that when you are actually performing the task. All right. So there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. Obviously, if you have a, a scenario where you're trying to capture what you're doing with a patient, you're probably going to set up an external video away from your web camera or take your web camera off of its um the monitor, if you have it mounted on the monitor, and put it on a stand behind you so that you can see um, what you're doing in your workspace. So that's one way to do it. It's just use your webcam, right? Use your webcam with Zoom. That's fine. You can also use your phone camera or whatever device is, is available for you to utilize in, um, in your office. If they have a camera that you can record with, definitely consider using that. Typically, the quality is a little better um, as far as trying to capture the, um, the interaction. And, you know, think about ways that you can capture the, maybe it's even capturing the, the um, scanner. I looked at my scanner when I said that, <laughs> the scanner. Um, maybe it's even capturing the scanner and how to utilize the scanner, right? So thinking of the different ways that you're using video, not just thinking, not just using the screen share, you might be actually taking your camera off of your computer and showing your workstation, your workspace, okay? So really thinking of video from, um, from a, if you if you've ever done HR training videos, typically the HR training is is um, there's a lot of situational videos that they might do skits and kind of reenactments of scenarios. Something like that is is what I would suggest, especially if it's you're talking about interfacing, interacting with someone at the front desk, for example. And I'm using this as the example because it has the most relevant kind of different styles of use, uses of video. I understand that most of you in the billing department, you may not be interfacing with patients. But again, our folks on the revenue cycle, the front desk is part of our revenue cycle. So you want to think about ways that you could even equip your front desk um, at, to be able to, to, um, to have processes that are supportive and scalable for you to hire new front desk. There's a lot of turnover at the front desk, let's be honest. And if you're in, um, we have some clients that are in military or, or proximal to military bases, whenever they're close to military bases, they just 
people leave every few months, every couple of years for sure. So it's just a constant um, kind of revolving door in that way. So um, so thinking about ways that you can use videos outside of just the screen share. Um, so really that covers all of our video discussion. I would say when you're screen sharing, be very cognizant of how you're screen sharing. And we'll talk about that um, during our app review. But sometimes it's valuable to share your entire screen and not just the one app. So some in, in some software, it only lets you share app by app. So make sure you're using um, a system that lets you share the entire screen so that you are able able to give a full picture of the process. If you only want them to see app because it's only relevant, um, a particular app just for clean <laughs> videos, share the app. I, I kind of giggle when I see people sharing screen and they're only doing something on like a, um, on a, um, one window of a, of a browser. And like at the top of their screen, there's like a million little tabs <laughs> where there's like, <laughs> you can hardly see the screen, like realistically, just like, just share your, if you're only going to keep them in the browser, that one browser, just share the one browser or pop it out at least like take away the distractions basically, because our minds like new things. So, you know, we're just curious. We're like, Oh, that person, you know, we get distracted. So we're like, Oh, that person plays that same video game that I play or whatever. Like <laughs> just like pop it out, right? Pop it out and let them see only what they need to see just to eliminate distractions when folks are trying to consume the video. So those are just a couple of tips on the, um, on the video. Um, definitely make sure or that, I mean, make it so that it's, it's, inter it's entertaining. We like to see faces. It's just a human thing. <laughs> we just like to see faces. So if I could encourage you, if you're recording a video, record it with your face. I know that there's some of you that are so, so shy to do that. I totally get it. I get it. I get it. But listen, if you're willing to have a, a Zoom video with that team member, um, just keep your camera on, pretend like you're chatting with them. And that is, that is how I would recommend you record these videos in zoom is, is pretend like you are training someone live. Like you're just talking, you can even give them a name in your own mind, <laughs> pretend like you're training an individual, um, live. And that will help to hopefully make you feel a little less nervous about the, the experience of recording yourself. I totally get it. You guys, I, this was not a natural thing for me. Initially, you watch some of my older videos. It took me a long time to even like want to hit record and to then upload the video. I have older videos that never made it to YouTube because I just didn't have the guts to hit the upload button. So I get it. I get it. Um, but trust me, it's well, it's worth it, especially because when we are um, trying to learn new information, like if you go on other people's videos on YouTube, you're probably finding yourself gravitating towards videos that have humans in them. Even if they're doing a screen share and they have their little talking head in the bottom corner, it just makes it a lot more personable. Um, it's just like as if you were training with someone um, kind of one-on-one -on -one or on a human basis. So um, keep it keep it to that point. Keep in mind too, like you guys aren't, aren't sharing this, right? This is for your people. So you're going to have a relationship with them, right? You're probably not going to publish this, you know, if you're just trying to, to document your process. So recognize that you're, you're, it's almost as if you brought someone here next to you and that person is trying to gra grasp this information. That's how important it is. So hit the record button, keep your face on the screen. Um, it'll be more powerful and, um, you know, the person can, can really learn from you instead of this, um, voice, in a video. So, so me moving on from, from video, let's shift to audio. So audio, when is audio useful? When I say audio, that is voice only. And so I just said, well, the stuff that I said about video and how powerful it is and all that stuff. Truth is, is that there are scenarios where we really only need audio or where we can only get audio. Um, when are scenarios like that happening? Um, well, if you are training someone on patient calls for follow-up, um, whether it's calling an insurance company for following up on a claim, or you are taking a patient call to answer questions on accounts, that is when audio is probably either your only method that you'll have or the one that's most powerful because you're probably not going to have the ability to, um, to record high quality using an external um, camera. Now it's possible. Like Grant Card Cardone, who's like a sales um, training guy, he 
will do a lot of those um, videos where he's recording him, his team speaking on, on with speakerphone on, and that's fine. You can do something like that to record your training. Um, but if you have the ability with your software, if you, those of you who are using like a professional voiceover IP phone company that says this call may be recorded for training purposes or whatever as the introduction for your for your folks. You can, in most states, you got to check your laws. Most states, you um, you can record one side of a conversation without permission from the individual or just by informing them. Again, check your state laws. Um, your, your phone company should have informed you of that as well, whether you're even allowed to just turn on record without giving a, approval for it. Most states allow you to do that type of recording, especially if it's there for internal purposes, you're not necessarily re, uh, using it kind of in a court or um, or to try to, you know, use it in sort of um, an external perspective. Um, but definitely, like I said, check your state laws. But when you're recording for um, for uh, the purposes of training your team on on how to address patients' questions, how to follow up on claims. It's very very powerful to have them hear both sides of the conversation more most in the most clear way possible. So yes, you have the ability to record a lot of voiceover IP um, call. Uh, with using voice over IP systems. So we, we use eight by eight. We like eight by eight. You can record. We actually have, you can, you can turn your recording on for all of your calls that come in. If you um, want to source from those calls and, you know, pull those out as examples, um, could be examples of what not to do. You know, sometimes a, a, I, I recommend this for a lot of, um, of, of practices that have um, centralized call centers. You need to have samples of best practices, the A players, the people that are kicking butt at their jobs, and you need examples of the folks that are not doing the, the best job. I would absolutely recommend that you do not record or keep their names present if you are kind of doing the intros to the calls because you're going to store that information. If that person isn't there anymore, you just don't, you know, want to make them, you know, feel some kind of way that you've recorded them as the the um, the the naughty ones, right? The ones that not the what not to do scenarios. But certainly use the what not to do as a really valuable place of training for your um, for your team because it's something that. Um, Folks don't always think about it until they're in that situation, and um, you want to kind of give them those scenarios, the out of the box ones, or the things that you know are are kind of from left field that you aren't necessarily expecting to be faced with. And so, and it could be like how to deal with an irate patient, what not to do <laughs> when you're dealing with an irate patient. You know, some people, some people don't know how to keep their composure when they're dealing with someone who's, you know, um, screaming at them. So, um, so sometimes it's, it's, um, it can be very valuable and it's also kind of entertaining, you know, to, to save those types of those calls and helpful for your, your staff to know that they're not alone, that they deal with, you know, they might be dealing with something a little bit tricky and, and it's possible that, um, you know, you might not be having a great day and here's the things that you do not want to do. And here's the things that you want to do. So, um, so yes, using the um, audio only for training calls for your staff, also creating a source, a resource for mock calls. So you might be doing, um, I love, love, love when people do um, live trainings with their team and allow them to do kind of mock um, interactions. I know people hate it. Like, I know it's not fun. It's not, I know no one ever loves that, but it's so great developmentally because it also makes you laugh and it builds a little bit of um, camaraderie because most people are uncomfortable when they're having those conversations. And it really helps like as a, to just help them like feel um, supported by like the intensity of that, like, I don't know what to say in this situation, right? Um, and it happens. It happens to everybody when you're in front of other people that you kind of get tongue tied. Um, and so it really helps to put them in a place where they might be a little bit uncomfortable, which actually helps the training um, for folks to take on calls for the first time, especially when the when that individual is brand new. So, um, so mock training, um, excuse me, mock calls and 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 training calls by sourcing from call act from live calls that are coming in. Um, Audio can happen, as I mentioned, um, before using the voice or IP, but then you can also, if you would, would um, have the desire to, um, you can source training from audio only from most of the 
um, apps that you're doing um, meetings on. So let's say you're training someone uh, by Zoom and you have recorded part of the Zoom. If you choose to, you can use only the audio versions of it and just like snip out sections of the um, that training session to store those, those um, audio recordings for you to use, um, for future. So, so yeah, so that, that really wraps it up for us. I'm going to, next time we'll talk in our, in our session together next time, I'm going to answer, look at questions. I have the thing covered right now. I've been trying to be, um, a good little girl and not get distracted. Um, the, um, the how to, um, how to start, got to get started with your like, uh, processes and what apps to use. We'll look at that. Um, I, I'm going to, let me actually, I, I'm realizing I have one, I have a whole little quick little section here that I'm going to just run through. So how to start with recording. First of all, if you're going to start with recording, make sure you understand why you're recording this process in the first place, who's going to be using it. The goal is that people are actually going to use it. So make sure it gets utility that you announce it to the individuals that are going to possibly benefit from it. And if someone on your team is already providing this um, or already performing this process and you are one of the other individuals that are perf performing this process, you want to make sure everyone on the team um, gets an opportunity to review it, to make sure that they ask questions, get provide feedback so that you can ensure you're not missing any steps. Um, so you've set your goals, you've given it like a little bit of a run through, already make a plan with who you might be reaching out to, to, to kind of collaborate with on this particular training video. Um, the next thing you're going to want to make sure of is you at first, like introduce the why that you're doing this at the first part of the training. And it could be very, very quick. It's like this video is teach is this video is going to teach you how to enter insurance for a Blue Cross Blue Shield patient using this software. Like you just quickly explain it at the start of the video. Even if you're like deep in the middle of a training session with someone and you're like, oh shoot, let me record say that first before you just, and that way the person who might be hitting replay and it gets like, let's say it doesn't get renamed or it gets stored with the wrong name. They know that they're not, they don't get to the end of the video and realize that they watched the wrong video that that happens from people. So, um, so yeah, next thing is uh, short and sweet. Uh, I know I've talked about this in a couple of other, other videos, but try to keep your videos no longer than like three to four minutes if you're doing any kind of like form of the tutorials or videos. If you're doing a long form training with someone, a full meaty tutorial, totally you can keep that, you can save it, you can store it. That would be more of that um, screencast, screen share interaction. People are asking questions throughout your training session, right? That's a little different than like us trying to create step-by-step -step succinct processes. When I'm talking about short processes, three minutes, four minutes is a long video. Again, you're thinking about videos that people are going to refer to and use on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't want them to be super long videos and you've got someone that's re-watching an hour and a half of a video while they're trying to remember how to do their job every day. Like that's too much. That's insane. Um, let's say you don't have time to do like short videos or whatever. Take your bigger video and then Go to Fiverr, have someone chop it up for you in little micro pieces if you don't know how to video edit. I don't know. I don't like to video edit. I'm just going to say that. I know how to. I don't like to. <laughs> um, so I would say, say just find someone on Fiverr that can help you chop up a video and make it into little short videos, um, add some text on the screen, all that good stuff. All right. Okay. Now I'm really done. I, I scrolled all the way down. I double checked. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, my friends. So we have not, not too many comments. Let's see what we got going on here. So. I like this. Um, how AI, let's see, how AI helps medical billing to document posting payments and stuff as well. Okay, so this is a great question, comment. Um, this is not really directly to, related to um, processes, but I do um, like, well, I guess it, I maybe if I'm, if I'm understanding um, correctly what your comment there is, Muhammad, I, I'm thinking that you're saying like it's a it's a question of how how it you know AI can help. Um, and I would love to have that conversation. So first of all, like robotics is not a new thing. Um, artificial intelligence is is still new ish in the healthcare um, industry on this area of the healthcare, there's a lot of folks that are building rules. Typically it's rule-based stuff that you see um, integrated into software to understand what to do um, situationally. Um, it's, it, 
it is still very, very new. Um, I think that there, for documentation perspective, there's an opportunity there to um, to us to learn from things like those chat. Is it chat CDP? chat. I don't know. It's all over the, all over the the world right now. <laughs> if you're trying to know how to like, you know, create like a blog or whatever, I can't remember what it's called, chat CDP or GD. I don't remember what it's called. Um, but those folks um, are, are doing some really cool things where you can type in any sort of like topic and it'll spit out like a, a blog for you. And it's using a lot of like uh, sourcing from a lot of different places. Um, the, the content, I do think that it's tricky um, because healthcare and for Unfortunately, as we talk about this in our channel all the time, it is not black and white. So there's not like very clear rules. There is so much gray in healthcare. And um, and so we learn really, yes, chat GDP. Thank you. G G G P T. <laughs> G. I just like completely messed that up. Um, so yeah, so I think that that's great. So uh, hi, Packy Gamers. Hey, let's see. I like it. Suggest tools or extensions. Yes. Next time actually Paki. that is what we're talking about next thursday i'm going to go through some tools we're going to look at a couple of different tools that i really like um some that are new-ish to us that we are like trying to get more utility out of i would love to know ones that you guys are interested in and we can totally go over those live and i can like play around with them i'm happy to do that see if it if there's anything that i would suggest um either avoiding based on it not working well and um, just keeping in mind that like some of the stuff that we're doing can be sensitive. So very, very important that you understand like how they store their information and what you're doing when you're um, recording, right? So very important. So uh, hi, I want to be natural. Great to see you. Great to see you. So what other questions do you guys have this evening? I don't see, uh, let me see. Facebook user. I don't see a Facebook user's name. Hi, Facebook user. Um, I don't see your name. Sorry. Um, but oh, wait. Hang on. There we go. Oh, hi, MM. I just saw your comment earlier. I'm so sorry. Hello. Um, yeah. So my friends, any questions? Any questions? So oh, it's Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer on Facebook. Great to see you. Great to see you. Um, any questions? Anything coming to mind? You guys pop it into the comments if you have anything after um, this live, if you've missed it today um, live. I know that um, it's the Thursday still after the Super Bowl. I've heard this whole week was a blur for many people. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. It was... I just hung out with my friends. I don't know. I don't know. I get like, I don't really passionate about the Super Bowl, like uh, all that stuff. So, <laughs> um, so I got plenty of sleep that night, we'll say, <laughs> but I know that a lot of people didn't. So, um, so yeah, I would say that um, you guys take it easy. Don't like get too, too uh, wound up as you landslide into the weekend. Um, and next week we're on Thursday, 6.30 PM Eastern. Next week, we are talking about apps for process development. We're going to look at apps. I'm going to pretty much the entire time we'll be screen sharing. Um, we will poke holes in some of those apps and also help um, you guys understand how to use them, a little bit of how we use them. And um, and then I'll talk about the actual file storage pieces of, um, of this, this uh, process documentation as well. And then the following week, we are Trivia Thursday again on March 2nd. So make sure you save the dates. We're always here, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, this channel, we are... Um, here on the in Lair University, but then we also have a you uh, not a YouTube a Facebook. If you're not on the watching us from the Facebook, um, then you should check it out. Check out the Facebook group because we are going to start doing meetups, and I'm about to um, have Mick, Nicole do a poll actually in our groups about our um, our meetups so that we can know when you guys want to get together, when we want to have time um, to chat live, and those would be live on Zoom. We're gonna actually be able to do some collaborations and actually have you guys work together and workshop some stuff together because um, I get a lot of questions about how to do X, Y, or Z. And some of you folks that are in those particular specialties or using those softwares can help each other, which is what we're all about. So 
I'm going to look for you guys to your evening. If you have questions or comments that come in, feel free to pop them onto wherever you're watching from. And if you liked this video, if you found this series helpful, our chat around processes, please um, give me the little thumbs up or whatever the heart button is on your app that you're watching from. And um, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing and share this with your friends. Uh, we do a lot of things related to alleviating the stress and confusion on the business of healthcare, all with the purposes of improving the delivery of patient care by um, just allowing our folks to feel supported. So in this space on uh, Medical Billers Network Live, it is a place for medical billers or those who are interested in getting into the field, but feel free to invite your friends if they are trying to learn a little bit more about it. All right, my friends, listen, have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe, stay cool or warm wherever you are, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.